Hi everybody, welcome back to Ninja Orchids. I really appreciate having you here. What is all this about? This time, well, a long time ago, I repotted my Zydenfadenia mitrata. I actually took it off a mount, thinking that those roots need to all be aerial. Failed miserably on a kind of makeshift mount. But uh, yeah, so I put it in this pot trying to do the self-watering with LECA system in order to not keep moving the roots. And I haven't been. And you can see that despite it getting misted heavily and trying to keep this area all at like 80% humidity, the roots keep failing on me. So it's been a few months now in this pot. The first couple of weeks, wow, the odor in there was terrible. And of course, that means all the big, long, dangly roots have decayed. I've been flushing like crazy, but as far as I'm concerned, despite the fact I'm getting some new root tips now, I will disturb Zydenfadenia mitrata. I'm going to clean up everything that's in the pot. It's going to get nasty, that's my guess. And then I'm going to put it into a smaller pot because the reason I chose such a huge size pot for it was because I had a mass of, you know, previously aerial roots. But again, the roots are just a mystery to me. I have a gorgeous one here going to the left there, but still, one day it's going to fail. So I'm going to just clean it up, put it into a smaller pot if I can do that without snapping or breaking anything. If not, it's just going to go back into the bigger pot. But off camera, first of all, I'm going to take off all the lava rock. I don't want to bore you with that. And then when it's time to take her out of the pot, I'll get back to you. Okay, so I've picked out the surface without wanting to get too crazy. I'm liking what I'm seeing. It's trying to go the way I would like it to go, as in down in the pot. I may just be jeopardizing all these root tips over here. It wouldn't surprise me if they now fail. But the potential I can see is there. I just need to keep up with it and clean it up now. At least I can see there is potential for success in putting this into Lekka and self-watering. That gives me a small margin of hope. And I also saw it's trying to start a new growth. And there's another little root tip growing. So there, there are signs that this could work. So we'll get at it, take it out of its pot, and let's see how bad the damage is on the inside. I believe that those old, long, long previous aerial roots are, are the ones that are decaying and dead. It'll be good to get them cleaned up. And if it then fits into a smaller pot, even better. All right then, let's get you out. So I just had a smell of the water and there's no bad odor in there whatsoever. Maybe I flushed the decay out and we just need to get rid of the remnants, which is great. The old water used to smell so bad. These are the moments of the orchid hobby that I look forward to, but also approach with a little bit of trepidation because there's one thing to see new roots growing and then knowing that you're the one that's going to now disturb those roots with the experience of knowing that they are fragile. That is why I used a bigger pot and I just saw some mealy bugs so we'll take care of those straight away. My trusted paintbrush. This is a soft paintbrush because I don't need to scratch away and get scale off. So for the mealy bugs I use a very soft paintbrush that allows me to get into every crevice.
So, mealybugs. For me, a sign of the plant is weak. No surprises there then. And here are what were once upon a time aerial roots that completely decayed in the setup. And now at least nothing smells. So I flushed all that decay out, but still cleaning it up is going to be a good thing. And you can see some of the new roots are clinging on to the media. I am positive that this can work. I can see the signs. It just needs maybe a lot more time. And maybe this cleanup will help it along. All off. I still, I still see some mealybugs. Let's do that properly. And I really, really do want to leave this orchid alone. I really want to just leave it be for it to just grow and acclimatize to a setup that doesn't bother the roots. I do not have humidity in my climate to accommodate these aerial roots. As much as I enjoyed them, it was frustrating. I couldn't keep a single one happy. And it used to be in water culture eight hours a day. And still, I couldn't keep them from destroying themselves on the tips, even though I hardly touched them. But let me get this cleaned up. Let's have a look. So here is the new growth. One year it started on six new growths for me. But if I can just get one and all these root tips to just continue doing what they're doing instead of just stopping, that'd be great. And I hope putting it in a smaller pot with fresh media and I can just leave it alone. Again, the large pot was simply because of the huge root system I had to accommodate. So I'm just going to cut my pot with two microfibers. In this case, I'm doing two because I want it to have as much humidity from the bottom as from the top. Now I can just fill up to my loop raise the wicking to at least halfway up the pot by raising the microfiber a little bit. So that's what it looks like with a loop in there. And then all I'm just going to do is hope for the best. Go. Just a little bit deeper than I normally would like, but I can pull her up afterwards. There's one growth, this one right here, that is too low for me to like it. I should just cut it off. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's almost like I know that everything I've just done is going to make every root tip stop growing. That is just how volatile these roots are. Earlier this year, I had like two spikes. It started out with four spikes. 
then went down to three after I meddled with it, but I, jobs have to be done whether it's in spike or not. Um, then I got two spikes to bloom, but they had like only five flowers on each, but at least I got to see the blooms. I got to experience their gorgeous jasmine fragrance. Very, very powerful, even on just such small spikes. So I'm really wanting this one to come out on top and really bloom well next year. The fact that the roots are actually holding on to the media and not all of them are not just drying off gives me a lot of hope. There is potential in this system, there is. I just have to get the balance right. No, I'm not going to tap it in. It is now in another similar environment to what it was before. I'm not going to tap it in. There's enough humidity around any of the roots inside the pot. It's not like I'm trying to get it to fill the pot with lecker and the roots need humidity. That's why I'm choosing this method. And it's something I cannot provide enough clearly for this orchid. So if I can just give this enough humidity around the roots and now don't move it, just spray the top every day as needed. Keep the reservoir filled at least to here. The reservoir only goes down to here, but because there's no roots down in the bottom of the pot, I can take it all the way up to maximize the humidity for this orchid. That's what I'm going to do. At least now I know it's clean. I mean, there's a certain thing about, okay, the odor in the pot is gone. That's great. I don't have anything flying around the surface anymore. That's even better. At least I know now it's clean. And I hope that it will make it. I would love to keep this orchid. I guess I just underestimated its humidity requirements when I purchased it. So I hope that anybody else with a Cydnophidenia with similar problems can see that in four months from being mounted to being potted up in order to accommodate the roots, clearly the roots just went downhill, which I was expecting, but I didn't expect that the roots that are growing on the top are still failing. That is my irk. You have a growing root tip, it's snaking its way around, and all of a sudden it just stops. And I, I, that has to stop. In order for this orchid to survive, it has to continue producing roots and letting them go down into the pot. Let me know if you have Cydnophodenia mitrata, but also let me know what climate you live in. If you have any helpful hints that can be of use. One more thing. I'm going to drape a microfiber over the roots that are here on the edge. There's one tip trying to grow, but I can already see by its let me take you down. So there's this group, this root tip here is trying to grow, but because it's already so stubby on the end, it's going to stop. I can tell that it will stop. Although it was a functioning root tip. That's what I have to avoid. I have now another marker here, which is the, the branching on the top. So I'll be watching that one quite closely. But yes, my Zydenfadenia mitrata, a much, much desired orchid, maybe not for my climate, but we'll do our best and hope for the best. And again, let me know if you have her, what climate do you live in? Does she just grow naturally for you, like with aerial roots and everything is in abundance? Or are you struggling as well? Let's compare notes, please. That would be awesome. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really appreciate having you here and I hope that you have a wonderful day and take care, stay safe. Bye.